Hello everyone, welcome to our second live stream. I'm joined again by my husband, Eric, and it's been a while since we've uploaded a proper video on the channel. As some of you may know, we have been in the UK filming for our upcoming documentary, In Search of the Dead, haven't we? Yes, it's been, it's been quite a roller coaster ride the last few weeks, all the interviews and those hunts and all the exciting stuff we've been doing. So that was just round one of the film and we have much more work still to do, but we are back home for now. So I hope to get back on track with making some videos. But before we do that, we want to give you an update as to what we've been doing. Um, but before I begin with that, just wanted to say, as some of you may have already seen, uh, we've launched merchandise. Um, we've already had some very, very lovely people buying a few things, which we're really impressed with. So thank you to those people. Um, there's a link to our store in the description for those of you who are yet to check it out. Take a look, even if you're not interested in buying something and have a look at some of the lovely artwork that has been made for us. And yeah, do you want to talk about the structure of this live stream? Well, we thought since Laura has been interviewing lots of people these last couple of weeks that perhaps it's time that she's interviewed about her experience unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> for me at least <laughs> yeah so i will ask her questions that i have prepared and also you know if you want any of you want to chime in ask a question to laura um i'll be happy to be your voice and ask the question in your part of course so you can chime in using the chat or the super chat function. We have two screens open, so we're ready to get your questions as soon as they come in. Hopefully we won't have too many technical difficulties as we did last time, but we'll see how it goes. Well, we learn on the job. That's why we do things, really. <laughs> okay, so to start off, for those listeners who are new to the channel or simply don't know yet, could you explain what our documentary In Search of the Dead is? Okay, so... As you know, we profess to do documentaries quite often on this channel, but this is going to be something different. It's going to be full feature and we are going to be filming every aspect of it. So for, for those of you who are curious, I will be appearing on camera. Eric may be a bit as well, depending on how the edit comes out, but he will mostly be behind the scenes. And um, we're going to be traveling across Europe. We've already been to the UK, as we said. We've also been across the other side of France from where we live um, to speak to a professor there. Um, we've got lots of exciting things planned. We're going to meet with experts from both sides of the fence along the way. So far, we've spoken to professors, authors, paranormal investigators, someone who operates a ghost tour, uh, mediums. Am I missing anyone? Other paranormal um, researchers, a minister for the Spiritualist Church. Uh, thank you, Ryan. Five pounds from Ryan. <laughs> thank you, Ryan. Um, so lots of different people. We want to get as full a picture as possible about the nature of ghosts, spirits, the afterlife, and also feeding into that mediumship. So you're going to be joining me for my journey, my adventure. Um, I, of course, have my own opinions and my own starting belief, and we hope that this documentary will show how they develop and possibly how they change as I'm exposed to interviewing different people and also, in the case of paranormal investigators, shadowing investigations myself, something which, prior to this, I had never done before. I am much more of an armchair researcher rather than a field researcher. <laughs> well, um... I think you started off this much more skeptical than you are. I still say you're still skeptical, of course, but you know, along the way, I think we've had our minds blown just again and again and again. Just by talking to professors, going on ghost hunting groups, and you know, which we cannot thank enough really for <laughs> such a profound educating experience that they've given us. Um, would you agree that you've had a mind-blowing experience? Yeah? Well, you, you use the word skeptical, and I just want to be clear, I am open-minded, but I do like to be convinced and to feel certain of things. Um, so, yes, it has been somewhat difficult the past 
Oh, Linda. Linda. <laughs> Dear me. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Oh. <laughs> what was your fav favorite place and why? Well, I will interrupt what I was saying in order to take this question. We'll come back to that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so far, favorite place? We went somewhere just, I mean, I don't want to reveal too much, but um, I suppose, how much should I read? We went just across it's the Scottish bit, border, yeah. okay. Linda, uh, it was very jealous, <laughs> we have to return this. Um, One of the paranormal groups that we shadowed, we uh, went just across the Scottish border into Jedburgh, to Mary Queen of Scots house. And just from what the place looked like and the building, it was absolutely beautiful. History it has a special place in my heart, so it was very cool for me mm. to be there overnight. Um, so the why is just because I, I love history and I, I love old buildings and that kind of thing. But for the future, there are places that I'm looking forward to more, um, I would say, which we'll get to at the end of this where we talk about our plans for the future. There's one particular location, which I know a lot of you will be excited about to hear, I think. Yeah. And for any of you who are curious, Jedburgh is completely haunted. Actually, the entire town, <laughs> every single building <laughs> is haunted. So, if, And it's lovely too at the same time. So I, I thoroughly recommend anyone to go there and spend a few nights there. It's, yeah, not just it's, the, yeah, not just the building we investigated, but everywhere. Even the, yeah. the accommodation we stayed in, that was supposed to be haunted as oh, well. Yeah, just yeah. absolutely everywhere. So <laughs> <laughs> you're surprised when you, you travel how many people have ghost stories of their own. Anyway, what, what was I saying? Right. Well, you were talking about being a skeptic and what you believe in. Yes. So I'm open-minded, but I do like to feel convinced. Um, so it, ha it has been difficult. Um, not just from the perspective of the believer side, as in the, the investigators and the mediums, but also the academic side. Some of the interviews were really deep and uh, intellectually challenging. I, I, really, I really enjoyed them. Um, for example, the question of consciousness, what is consciousness? When you're discussing spirits in the afterlife, this is something that really needs to be discussed. Is, the, is our conscious mind part of our physical body or is it something else? And when you look at that from a scientific angle, it really does challenge. Well, if you start to assume that, well, start to think that perhaps consciousness is detached, then ghosts are entirely possible. Yes, of course, because they can exist without the physical body. Um, well, on this journey, I would say you've experienced a lot, perhaps it's more on the personal side. What kind of feelings have you experienced? Have you been scared, intrigued, amazed? I wouldn't say I've been scared. I don't get scared very often. I think a lot of, a lot of people comment things like, oh, you deal with the paranormal every week. Do you ever get scared by the things that you research? And I honestly don't. I don't know whether that's just me personally or whether it's because in a way I've become desensitized to it by doing it so often, but I don't get scared. I don't get scared of the dark. I, I don't get scared of that kind of thing. But other emotions, yes. Have I been amazed? Yes. Have I had my core beliefs tested? Yes, it has been. Even just, as I said, we have more filming to do. Even just these past two weeks have really challenged the way that I look at the world. And I'm really looking forward to what lies ahead to continue having my beliefs tested and continue having this emotional roller coaster. And we hope that this will come out in the documentary, although, what is it, we have like 15 hours plus yeah, recorded already. Like and uh, we're hoping that it's gonna be about two hours when we're done, so. We've never edited anything like this before, so <laughs> that's going to be a challenge for us. <laughs> well, going back to your beliefs then, after our first round of filming, do you, do you think now that there's actually a chance that spirits exist? It's a difficult question, especially when you start to deconstruct what a spirit is. I think the common belief in Western Christian culture is a spirit is the remnant of a deceased person. The idea of personal survival that we keep our memories and our experiences after we die and that there's a remnant of that which can then interact with the living but when you look at other cultures and other religions which is something we wanted to do right from the start as much as possible as difficult as it is you have for example the islamic perspective that spirits are not deceased people they're jinn something completely different 
So it's difficult to answer because first you have to define what do I think a spirit is. But overwhelmingly, the people we have spoken to have been of the opinion that a spirit is a deceased person. So I'm just going to go with that for now because I feel like that encompasses more of what we've encountered. Yeah, to simplify. But I just want to put that disclaimer there for anyone else who disagrees with my premise. So spirits is deceased people. Um, I think for a lot of people, it's difficult to resign themselves to the fact that there is nothing after death, particularly people who have lost a loved one, to think that they're gone forever and that their personality and memories are lost. So it is comforting in a way to think that spirits live on. Personal experiences and evidence, I hadn't had all that much to convince me of the reality of them, regardless of how much I wanted them to exist or not. But on the final day of our filming, um, well, the final evening, because it was late, something truly bizarre happened. And, you know, I'm trying to walk that line of not revealing too much, but still telling you something. It really shook me yeah. because it was something personal and something which over a week later, I am still trying to rationalize how it's possible. We were with a, uh, a paranormal group in Wales with two mediums, part of the team. And the information that they told me, it was just incredible. I, mm. I'm just racking my brain as to how to explain this. And the best explanation that we can really come up with is other paranormal explanations. And surprisingly, academics kind of follow this train of thought as well. Rather than saying mediums communicate with the dead, they're saying things like mediums are telepathic. They, things like super ESP, where they can tap in to this huge information bank that's all around us, in the air around us. It's got super ESP. Yeah, now. super ESP. That's quite and how insane. bizarre is that? That academics are more likely to say that ESP is real than ghosts and survival, mediumship. The you might as well believe in ghosts. You might as well believe in it, mm. because it is just so bizarre. So <laughs> when, you, when you sit with an academic and they tell you that, that the only way they can explain perhaps an experience, the experience that I had is to, <laughs> to give me another paranormal explanation is really difficult. Uh, someone asked when the documentary is coming out. I thought we'd just clarify that for a second. Okay, so... As I said, we've done the first round of filming and we have at least two more to do. Um, as we mentioned in our other update, we want to go out east and we'll be ending up in Romania. And also because of what happened in the UK, we feel like we have some unfinished business there, which we need to return to and tidy up at the end. So there's going to be at least two more rounds of filming and then the editing. With that in mind, we hope to have it finished in the autumn I'm going to say mid to more, more likely late autumn. Mm. I would say around mm. October, November, something like yeah. that. Yeah. We had initially doing it for September, but I think that's too ambitious. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think so now as well. Because it is a journey. You go into this and you can be prepared with your interview questions and your list and your schedule. But when you're there, you do not know what's going to happen. That is very true. I mean, I, I can say for myself, we're finding out much more than I thought we would. I, I was thinking we were going to find out a lot of stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, um, so, are there any other questions that people perhaps have that they would like to ask? Just wait a moment for the, the chat to catch up. Okay. I, w I will say, though, that um, even though this was always meant to be a personal journey of sorts and I was expecting to be personally involved, the level of personal investment has gone far beyond <laughs> what I even anticipated. Uh, it really is challenging. Well, let's talk a little bit more about your views and how they've you know, progressed thus far. What about ghosts in the form of a memory being stored in the matter around us and being played on repeat before our eyes? What do you think about stone tape theory now? Personally, I would say I've had no experience or evidence that really proves it to me, 
although as a concept I do like it and think that it's very interesting the idea that some kind of remnant can be imprinted within the fabric of a place for example when you hear stories about battlefields old battlefields which seem to replay the battle with spectre soldiers just going about and killing each other seemingly oblivious to any onlooker I think that's really interesting the idea that these are not spirits they're ghosts they're not conscious they do not actively interact but because such trauma or bloodshed happened in a place it leaves a mark on that location so I, th I think there could be something in it but personally I don't have anything that really suggests to me it's real but I do find it interesting as a concept well, I, I think I began liking stone tape theory as as, an, as a concept, but we've run across the idea of morphic resonance, which, in contrast to stone tape theory, is the idea that memory is stored in the environment and we're able to witness it, uh, and witness it by sort of tapping into a frequency that is in the environment and then playing it in our minds, something akin to a TV set picking up a signal in the area. Um, to simplify that a bit, you could say that stone tape theory says that a tree falling down in the forest makes a sound regardless of anyone being there or not, whereas morphic resonance says that a person must be there in order for the tree to make a sound. What do you think of this, these two the theories? Then? Well, one of the academics that we spoke to was an expert in psychedelics and brain functioning, and I asked him, how much does science actually know about the brain? And his response was, not very much. So once you accept this as a reality, as a, 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 work, a thing to work from, the idea that our brain could intercept a frequency of sorts, a memory of a now deceased person, and then play it in our brain, I think it could make sense. Um, whether it counteracts stone tape theory or not, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think we touched upon that a bit when we did the Mandela Effect video. The idea of people tapping into this mm -hmm. quantum field and just somehow recurring memory. Let's get to some questions. Yeah, so. we've had quite a few questions. Yeah. So, where, which part of the UK, which locations did you get to? We had two questions to do with where we've been. Right, where haven't we been? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I mentioned we went up to Scotland. That was the first place we went to. And then we kind of shimmy down the the length of England we stopped off in York uh, we were around by Sheffield um, by Luton Th these were mainly to meet with people for interviews so to clarify we haven't been investigating looking for ghosts absolutely everywhere we've been meeting with people in their homes at their places of work very kind generous people who welcomed us in and fed us and talked with us for hours on end. So if any of those people are listening right now, thank you so much. Your mm. kindness has really overwhelmed us. So mainly it was meeting with people, but we did do an investigation in Scotland, as I mentioned, and we also did one in Wales, in Cardiff. But other than that, it has been in people's homes and things like that. Cardiff is another place that's completely haunted as well, I think. <laughs> Everywhere is completely haunted. Yeah, especially the UK. Do we have a psychic with our group? Now, this is an interesting question because one of the, one of the things that we wanted to come to mediums with was the question, can anybody develop mediumistic skills? And surprisingly, I think all of them said yes, it's within us all. And on two separate occasions, a, uh, a little a anecdote metaphor was used, uh, very similar. The idea that anybody can k kick a football or anybody can pick up a paintbrush, but not everybody's a footballer, not everybody's an artist. It's a skill which lies dormant, I suppose, within us all. And we all have the potential to activate it with varying degrees of success. So. We do not classify ourselves as psychics or mediums, but apparently we have the potential to become so if we trained intensely to do it, mm -hmm. which is a, an interesting possibility, I think. <laughs> okay, well, another I question? I think also you have to be careful as well, because some people say, well, we spoke to one medium that his ability was sort of dormant and one day just 
came out so much that he was chased down the stairs by the ghostly image of a young girl. Oh yeah, it's not all. It doesn't all sound yeah. like a jolly good time because it's just <laughs> no. communicating with the dead. And of course, not everybody is a medium from birth either. It seems that um, near-death experiences play a part in activating mediumistic abilities, which is really mm. interesting. I haven't had such a, an experience, but Eric has. So if perhaps if one of us is more likely to develop mediumistic skills, perhaps Eric would be more likely than me, if you yes, uh, believe that. Well, I had a near-death out-of-body experience when I was a child. And uh, obviously that was quite a bizarre thing to look at my body as, you know, there and everybody's just friend thinking all around me. And I, I would say I didn't gain any sort of psychic abilities after this, though. I, I just lost a lot of my memory before that. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Have I not just I haven't trained? I haven't gone to medium mm -hmm. college? Go to medium school. <laughs> yeah. Another question from Linda. Have you heard the theory of sound waves played very low, making us feel like places are haunted? This idea of external factors influencing us is something that we touched on recently, in fact, in our most recent interview where we went across France to meet with a professor. And yes, there is some research to suggest that sound waves or what is it, electromagnetic fields and things like that can influence the way that we feel. The external factors in the physical environment could perhaps make us feel like we are being watched like there's a presence there or make us feel lightheaded or that we've been touched especially if we are more open to the idea of a place being haunted if we're told that something terrible happened in a building and these physical factors are present research seems to suggest that people would be more likely to report a haunting but at the same time we sometimes get people like uh, even uh, people are more likely but people still would report a place being haunted Regardless if you tell them they're haunted or not, they will still believe that those kind of things still occur. Mm hmm Definitely. Okay. Do okay. you have another question for me? <laughs> <laughs> um, a while ago, we put up a survey mm -hmm. to ask everyone about their own panel beliefs. And thank you all for answering. <laughs> so many of you have answered. And there's such a huge amount of uh, beliefs out there, many different... You can mix them up all, everywhere you want. People, some people are religious and believe in ghosts. Some people religious don't believe in ghosts. Some people are atheists but believe in ghosts. Mm -hmm. There's a great variety in that. Um, so what do you think of the survey results we had thus far? Because it's still up, if any of you wish yes, to. Yes, the survey is still live. The link should be in the description as well. So if you're interested in doing that, it's just a five-minute thing. Go ahead and fill that in after this. I suppose the thing which surprised me the most was that we had about 80% of you saying that you believe in ghosts, which that, that in itself didn't surprise me because, of course, you all subscribe to the Paranormal Scholar. What else do we expect? But many people were unsure or less willing to admit that mediums, that they thought mediums could communicate with the dead. It seemed like quite a topic of contention. I think it was something like you know, 46% of you said that you believe mediums can communicate with the dead versus 80% of you saying you believe in ghosts. The percentage of you who were not sure about whether you believe mediums had that ability or not was surprisingly high compared to the other questions. And I think that's really interesting and perhaps reflects on the mixed reputation that mediums have, that perhaps they have a reputation for being fraudulent or trying to extort people out of money and people are wary of that they don't know whether to believe them or not well we had um, we contacted many mediums mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of them <laughs> uh, we believe perhaps reluctant to show up because they you know are not the real deal of that yeah you know. it was it was certainly interesting um the responses we had from people we approached who didn't want to talk and there were several you know pay by the hour mediums who didn't want to but that being said i from my experience my opinion of mediums has changed a lot it has completely changed i i think it's wrong to tar everyone with the same brush you have you know bad plumbers 
bad electricians, but you also have good ones. And I think the same should be said for mediums. There is definitely something there. Whether they are communicating with the dead or whether it's ESP or something else, I don't know. But they definitely have some kind of ability. Yeah. And um, every expert that we've talked to surprised me because they all say a good medium, even if they're not really communicating with the dead, they can have therapeutic qualities to whoever they're talking to, somebody they can always be a they can help well with mental health and aspects such as that. I, I think when people have paranormal experiences, regardless of whether or not it is a ghost, etc., but they have something they believe is paranormal, there is a stigma which prevents people from speaking up about it. They will not go to their GP, their doctor, they will not phone the police, they will not even go to their therapist or psychiatrist in some cases, because there just is that stigma. They don't want to be called crazy. They're scared to speak out. So people like mediums break that taboo. They offer these people a way to talk about their experiences in a non-judgmental atmosphere. And I, I think that's, if nothing else, that in itself is really important, especially those mediums who don't charge, who are very honest and straight about the things that they do. To have that as a, a public service in a way, in a world where paranormal experiences are increasing and people are increasingly say that they encounter ghosts. Mm. I think that's, that's really important. And I, I do think it's wrong for mediums to have this bad or mixed reputation. But I can see why, I completely understand why people are so confused about their opinions about mediumship. Uh, one of the paranormal groups we went to, they said that there's an awakening going on, isn't there? That all these paranormal phenomena seem to be getting more exposed, that people become more aware of what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say there's definitely some cultural movement going on that we're in the middle of. Anyways, uh, we've talked about this perhaps even for a future documentary idea. Would you like to learn to be a medium? Yeah, uh, that's an interesting question. Going back to what we said before about being told that anybody can develop mediumistic skills. They might not be very good at it, but anybody can do it. And we were toying with the idea, maybe I should become a medium. And going back to what I said about my experience in Wales with the paranormal group, there was perhaps something in what they said, which, if you take it in the way that they were implying, suggests that I could perhaps have some potential mm. as a medium. Is that correct? Mm. Yes. I would say so, definitely. Um, so would I like to become one? <laughs> it's, a, it's a really bizarre question because it's not really something that I ever considered until a week ago. So I'm sorry if I don't have a fully surely when you formulated... Were, surely when you were young, you know, you thought about being an astronaut or whatever, being a medium surely was there as well. Being a medium. <laughs> I think the idea that you could be like mobbed by spirits or coming to you as a gateway to the living and they're there wanting to talk to you. For someone who is more of a recluse and a shy sort of person, that can be a bit intimidating having like a horde of yeah. deceased people coming to you saying, please listen yeah. to me. <laughs> Imagine being one of, well, one of the mediums we were with in a graveyard. You know, uh, oh, we're surrounded by people here. I'm just like... Yeah, and he... he <laughs> He insinuated that they were all queuing up ready to speak to him because they could, they knew that he was some kind of doorway to the world of the living. They were like, no, listen, listen to me. And they're shouting over each other to try and get his attention. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I don't want to be the center of attention <laughs> if I'm a medium and then go somewhere. There's lots of spirits. But it's, it's very, very interesting. Uh, you know, maybe I'll give it a go just to see if it is possible. Mm -hmm. That will be another documentary then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, to our listeners, particularly those of you who answer not sure on our survey, is there anything you yourselves would want to know about mediums? What sort of information do you need in order to form a better judgment as to their abilities? Mm -hmm. So if you have a question, let us know. We've already met some mediums, but we will be meeting other mediums. So what is it that you would like to know to clarify your opinion mm -hmm. on mediums? Although I will say, I think a large part of it is about being there and experiencing yeah. it for yourself. Yeah. Well, there have been some, well, Matthew Smith told us about um, the medium Gordon, 
Gordon Smith. Gordon Smith, yes, in the UK, that they did some experiments with him, and he was able to tell things about another person sitting in another room, completely mm-hmm. different from him. I mean, that's a that's quite an incredible feat, really. Should, you know. Yeah. It sometimes but, would give evidence, perhaps, to telepathy. So that's why some scientists. Say yeah, that. that explaining the paranormal with another paranormal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a paranormal explanation it is bizarre. But there's also the question of whether mediums can be tested in a laboratory setting. The idea that we mentioned, we used this before when we interviewed people, you can't just make a volcano erupt on cue. Mm. You can't just say, rain, rain. Certain conditions have to be correct. And it may be the case for mediums that you can't just put them in a laboratory and expect them to perform. Certain things have to be correct. Uh, someone asked, are they able to shut off their power? The, the mediums and the mm-hmm. from the mediums we've spoken to yes they uh, say uh, one that we spoke to he said that he needs about half an hour before to get into his mediumistic state it's not something for him that requires any kind of effort it's he described it as you pick up a glass of water and you drink it when you deconstruct it it's quite a complex act but when you actually do it it doesn't require any thought so he described it as that but yes he does need half an hour or so just to prepare himself in order to enter that state so they can turn it off for the most part although if something is strong perhaps they will get they will get spontaneous things come to them yeah yeah i would say so so do we have any more questions on the chat i think we're gonna take a little break for that if anybody wants to ask another question um Get it to us. We'll just continue with ours for now and then we'll, we'll come back if anyone, give people a chance to, to type out their questions. Well, you can ask about mediums or about anything else that we've talked about on this, mm-hmm. in this live stream. Uh, but let's move on now to the future, I would say. So next month we're going to go on our second round of filming. Mm-hmm. I'd like to say some details. Yeah, so I mentioned that we're going to be heading out east. Uh, our end location is... Um, Romania to a place where locals are called the Bermuda Triangle of Romania and I'm not going to say too much but some of you with uh, knowledge perhaps of Romania could guess at perhaps a location that we might be interested in a couple of locations but on the way we'll be passing through other countries to meet with other people along the way uh, because we'll be driving Mm. still organising a few things but we have perhaps other mediums lined up um, hopefully going to speak to someone in Hungary who is an, another ghost tour operator um, to really understand the cultural relationship between people's beliefs um, in the paranormal and entertainment which of course is something that being on YouTube we're involved in how do you discuss the paranormal in an entertainment genre so ghost tour operators are really interested in that about the tourism side of the paranormal so that's what we're going to be doing for the second round. And we're tired after the first one. And I think this one's going to be even more tiring. We're going to but... rest up here, yes. commit ourselves to YouTube for a bit, and then start yeah. up on this again. Is We've had question? some more questions. We had, can a ghost see another ghost? I think that's really interesting. And I don't necessarily have an answer for it. Yeah. Well, if you could say that ghosts are just memories and loop, mm-hmm. then... I would say no, but... But spirits, spirits. can a spirit... Well, when the medium was communicating, at one point he was communicating with two spirits and he suggested that they were competing with one another in order to get his attention. So that kind of suggests that perhaps they had some knowledge of each other because they were trying to distract him from the other. I think that's really interesting because it... It tests our understanding of, is the spirit realm literally another realm, like a, a single world in which all the spirits walk around in together? Mm. Or is it something different from that? I, I don't know what, but something different. Is it better to prove a medium as being real or try to debunk them? I think it's always wrong to come at research or an investigation with an intention mm. to either try and prove they're real or try and debunk them. I think it's better to be objective and to try and just observe and then form 
your conclusion afterwards, which is really, really difficult. We all have our biases. Mm. And as hard as we try to leave them at the mm. door, you're going to be influenced by them. That voice in the back of your head is going to say, well, you, I don't believe this, or, you know, I want to believe this. But there's also the idea you should personally invest yourself into anything you're experimenting with. So, you know, it, it depends how you go about it, really. Maybe you want to actually believe that they're real and think that they're real going into that and try to be convinced, but then you still have to step back and observe yourself afterwards. If you don't have that moment, like you said, you can't really get good results. Yeah, I think that's true. But it's personal evidence. Personal evidence is never going to be enough to get people to 100% believe in the paranormal because everybody wants personal mm. evidence, which raises the question, will spirits ever be proven in a scientific kind of way to be real? Are they meant to be proven? Some people we've spoken to said that, no, they're not meant to be proven. It's about you personally awakening and having these experiences and changing your personal understanding of the world around us. It's not about science needing to prove something. If it's real and you believe it's real from your personal experiences, then it's real to you. That's what matters. So whilst it is important to try and leave your biases at the door when you approach a medium or anybody else and not come at it with an intention, at the same time it is important to recognize that this is a personal experience of yours and that perhaps only by having this personal experience will you actually be able to form a conclusion at the end of it. Yeah. I would say sometimes it's impossible just to observe especially this kind of phenomenon. Um, you know we, we obviously have tried to just be observers and when we did our investigations in, in the UK but we ended up being personally invested somewhere along the line. Mm -hmm. Well death and the afterlife is a is a subject that touches us all. And at some point in our lives, whether it's because we've lost a loved one or we're ill and perhaps approaching death ourselves, we will think about it. We will think, is there something else after, after death? Or is this it? And because it touches us all, it is really, really difficult to abandon that personal element that informs your judgment. Do we have any more questions? So, are ghosts a form of, a, uh, of an event or are they part of a larger independent frame? So this is touching on stone tape theory yeah. here. When you're using the word ghosts, what we've been told is ghosts are stone tape theory, that they are an event that's on loop. Um, the independence comes from spirits, they're the ones who are able to interact with you. Well, there's reports of things like ghost battlefields and things like that, mm -hmm. ghosts fighting each other on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. I always find those quite odd. Mm -hmm. It makes me wonder if there's any consciousness there, you know, people eternally on loop killing each other on the battlefield. It's quite bizarre. Yeah, are, are we able to communicate with them? Do we, do we have the right equipment or is it just that we just can't communicate with them? Yeah. Full stop. <laughs> Have we ever experienced demonic hauntings? Well, ooh, you think that counts? <laughs> <laughs> I would say no. I mean, demonic is a yeah. is a hard word to grapple with because are you saying a malevolent spirit? Or are you saying a demon and which is not a deceased person? It's something different. But I, I, so it is well, difficult to define that. But I, I do want to say that it is important to recognize that most people's experiences generally do not seem to be malevolent. Mm -hmm. They are, you know, neutral. They're a reflection of an individual in life. Well, I can say that perhaps we may, we can't really confirm this yet. I don't even know if we'll ever be able to confirm this. We may have run into uh, a malevolent, a malevolent spirit. spirit. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say demonic, but um, certainly not a very nice yes. entity who was apparently not very nice in life and did some not very nice things um, to us when mm. we were investigating. Yes, and one of our subscribers, in fact, was <laughs> met this malevolent entity. It was not <laughs> kindly treated. <laughs> no. More of that will be in the documentary. <laughs> yes, but these are supposed to be rare. Um, a lot of people, when they encounter spirits or ghosts, 
re report feeling comfort because it is a loved one and they they do cherish these interactions not everybody wants um paranormal investigators a medium an exorcist to come in and uh remove a spirit some people are happy to live alongside them and it is bizarre to listen to people who report having a working relationship of sorts with the spirits who live in their homes so spirits are not all malevolent in fact only a very minority of them are just as people in the world of the living are not a majority yeah. well as people say that that we run it across that when you die you are the person that you were in the moment before you die and then after you die mm -hmm. so you could say that you know many people mistake demons for what is basically just an evil person a person mm -hmm. that was bad in life and continues to be bad afterwards yes so um yeah that was one of the things that we wanted to figure out what do we mean by life after death is it do you undergo some kind of change or is it about survival in the sense that you retain your memories your experiences and the things that make you you and someone that we spoke to said that the day before you die and the day after you die you are the same which is why people go back and visit loved ones or you know spirits are claimed to go back and visit loved ones because they still have an interest in their family members and if you're going to say that spirits exist of course that makes sense so those malevolent entities still have malevolent you know, ideas and their memories of what the bad things that they did in life and they're still influenced by them mm. that's very true well, uh, one person we spoke to, uh, um, they say about the fact that they have a, I guess say, uh, not poltergeist, but it's not really like an evil poltergeist destroying their life, but in their house, like, there's a spirit that, you know, moves things in the house, mm -hmm. and they've just kind of learned to live with it, really. Yes. <laughs> they don't really mind it or anything else like that, so. Yeah, as I said, some bizarre stories yeah. from people who have a working relationship. Yeah with spirits it's amazing is everywhere we go and I think we haven't I think maybe it's one person we haven't met that has not had a paranormal experience really mm -hmm. have you ever had a bad entity hang on to you this is another question which we uh, wanted to ask people the idea that can spirits follow you because uh, like when you watch horror films and things it's always like oh it's attached to you and it's it's followed you well once um, again that may have happened yeah with us so i think for those of you who watch the documentary when it's done um there will be uh, some very interesting moments yeah. in it depending on how the edit comes out because it felt like such a long night yeah that night. we didn't have enough cameras i think i think we need more cameras yeah we yeah. did not expect what happened to us? But you know, I don't want to. I don't want to say too much. Well, we can. But, uh, we can say something. This is a loyal audience. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, we'll give a little bit of a, a teaser then. So we met with a paranormal group in Cardiff, and we went to a graveyard of all places to do an investigation. And the night did not start as intended because we had our interview questions laid out and we were ready to interview. But we couldn't film in the hotel and it was raining outside. So the interview just didn't happen. So we were going to do the investigation instead. And the, the leader of the group, a medium, he had some dowsing rods. And he was getting in his mediumistic state and mentally communicating with the spirits. And Eric and I were filming him using the dowsing rods, thinking, oh, this looks rather interesting. Let's let's film this and then we realized that the dowsing rods were pointing at us one each and we said what are you doing to him and he said oh i'm, j I'm just asking the spirits uh, who are they most attracted to who are they most connected with and we're like but they're pointing at us and we move slightly and they follow us and we're like okay this is a bit weird we we were just filming uh, a medium using dowsing rods and thought that looked pretty cool but apparently they were pointing at us because there were spirits connected to us and uh, the medium said that he had two spirits trying to communicate with him. One who was connected to me and the other who was connected to Eric. And as the night progressed, the one who was connected to me 
kind of stole the show. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to rubbish <laughs> your experience or, uh, or sideline it. My experience was just like bumped out. It's just like uh, yeah, too much going on, really. And uh, so the, the one connected to me and there was a, another spirit again who was connected to that spirit and therefore connected to me as well. And it related to something from my childhood, which I had not necessarily assigned as a paranormal experience, something which I have only discussed in the very briefest of details, something which even Eric doesn't know all that much about. But the medium almost innocently told me this information like he was like well I've got this information and like does this mean anything to you and I was like yes it means something to me and it was not a deceased family member as well which is oh to clarify also the medium they didn't like guess or anything that he just said it yeah he j it was not like oh I have a I have someone with a name beginning with a B there's a B like Bob or Bertha does this mean anything? no it wasn't anything like that it was this is the information and I'm not changing my stance this is the information does it mean anything to you and it did mean something to me and the more he spoke the more it meant something to me and the details he gave nobody could have known those details i you know i've been thinking about this for the past week i can't figure out how he knew these these details and as i said there were two spirits connected to me one a, a teenage girl who was very very strongly connected to me and another one a malevolent spirit who was connected to me and both of them had been connected to me for the past 10 years of my life yeah it was crazy that night began even crazy ended crazy it was everything i think i could say this part because in that, i don't think it's going to make it to the edit as i was preparing the equipment and uh, we were next to the church we heard the organ playing like the beginning of a classic horror movie except the church was completely empty as far as we can tell and it was like a kind of a spooky tune as well <laughs> it was really odd i was just preparing the thing and we were like running around trying to see if anybody was in there and then you know two a, a couple members of the of, of our group saw legs running out you mean two of, you saw legs i saw it out of the corner of my <laughs> eye it was really weird i wasn't facing the direction but oh, oh thank you linda, linda. <laughs> <laughs> Miss, oh. we have felt our heartstrings being pulled by you waiting for yeah, new videos and we're gonna like, try and make something as soon as possible oh, linda thank you yeah, so much yeah thank you linda <laughs> oh i don't even know what to say i'm really touched <laughs> now we're gonna get a video out there next friday so we'll be yeah. back for a little bit yeah we're back to normal for july at least yeah august i think might be a bit crazy again yeah it's but uh, crazy still, I think. Yeah. But hopefully, it will be worth it in the end. Oh yeah. So anyways, back. So yeah. I was saying, uh, yeah, a couple of us saw spirit legs running out of the church after the music stopped in the direction of the graveyard. Yeah, the it was about half eight, nine o'clock at night. The lights were all off inside the cathedral. Um, some of us tried to look through the window, and we couldn't see if anybody was in there. The doors were locked, so we don't know why the music was playing unless it was set to play on schedule but it, it wasn't it wasn't like it was on the hour it was just a random time so it's not like you know sometimes on the hour that the church yeah. bells go or whatever it wasn't anything like that and yeah after the legs apparently came through the door it stopped uh then we moved into the graveyard the graveyard by the way was i don't know what the word it, creepy i suppose so, i mean it's, it was yeah. overgrown and old the oh, headstones were was... just more than it a was, millennia, wasn't it? That, it was a, t yeah. you know, it's like a gold star standard yeah. graveyard. <laughs> and two members of the group uh, went off walking amongst the, the headstones with the camera and just preparing for the investigation that was to come. And they came back and they said, we just saw a grey figure walk through the long grass by some headstones. And they both described it. They both described it as being the same, looking the same. And, you know, it was very believable they did not come across as people who would just make stuff up and it wasn't very sad in a very dramatic way it was oh we just saw that we just and then the two mediums said that that they, there was a lot of spirits around us at that time and it was that a very active it was night. an active night and they said things are going to happen tonight and things did yeah. things really did 
That's the thing. I wish we had more cameras because we were just there with the mediums and yeah, we missed a golden opportunity to, to film a ghost there nearby. Yeah. <laughs> it was quite a, it's quite an interesting night. Yeah. I have a question from Sue. Did you feel okay or unsafe um, when the childhood facts were given? I didn't feel unsafe, but I did feel very, very overwhelmed because not because I felt scared or anything, but because my brain just exploded. My rational, materialistic, I suppose, understanding of the world around me just in my head. And I was like, nope, I can't deal with this. This is too weird. I think I said something like, this is too bizarre. Yeah, and I remember that. Yeah. Well, when, when you said it, you know, you kind of broke down for a moment, didn't you? Yeah, it, it was very weird. But that night, was so chaotic and didn't go according to plan whatsoever that we have no idea how much of it we've caught on camera yeah. which is really because there are moments where it was too personal and the cameras were off and as i said the interview bit at the start didn't go according to plan so we were up in the air so. I, uh, there's another question here do you have a different opinion now about why uh, investigations did. are done at night versus the day um, I'm I'm still not sure. I, I, I think it's just because it's less noisy. Yeah, it? we touched on in our in our last live stream. We said the practical considerations, and I think there is, there is something in that. I mean, we were in the graveyard late at night, early morning, and of course nobody was there. At least nobody living apart from us, <laughs> because who would be apart from paranormal investigators? Whereas if you go during the day, perhaps someone walks past. I think most people say that ghosts the, they're always there. The mm -hmm. Spirits are always there. God is the time of day. Mm -hmm. Well, I had a little experience in our house where in the middle of the day I saw a ghost cat rub, rub up to my leg in the corner of my eye, which freaked me out. Yeah. That was just the middle of the day. It was like lunchtime. Yeah. So. Uh, I think also for another practical consideration, for paranormal investigators, this is not their job. This is their hobby. They have a day job. So doing it in the yeah. evening or the night is practical for them to do after they've finished work or whatever they've been doing during the day. So... Yeah, I, I think mainly practical considerations. It would be good to try and do an investigation during the day to see if the same thing happened. But I don't think, because there is that concern that because it's night, people see things that they wouldn't in the day because, you know, they're on edge or they're scared and more susceptible. For me personally, I don't think that's how I work. Like I said, I don't. I'm not scared of the dark or anything like that. I'm very comfortable in the dark. But I think there is that risk for other people, but especially on perhaps some paranormal uh, TV shows where it's in the dark and everybody's energies are up and you know the atmosphere is very tense and ripe for things to happen or things to seem mm. like they're happening. Well, one of the worries we have is that you, know, you tend to go to bed quite early, you know, like 9, <laughs> 9 10 p.m. But I'm not I a night owl, no. But it was really easy to stay up to 3 a.m., 4 a.m., <laughs> these investigations, you know? Well, when you're standing up in the middle of a graveyard, <laughs> having your understanding of the world ripped to shreds. It was very know. peaceful. <laughs> yeah. No, they were very fun. Yeah. Very... Um, want to do more. In enthralling, yeah. We want to do more of those. So, I think we'll ask one last time if anybody has any questions. And then you think we'll wrap it up yeah. then? Yeah, so good. final call for questions, if anybody has some, going back as well. If you have any questions you'd like us to ask mediums or people that we might interview, what do you want to know? What is going to change your understanding perhaps of ghosts, spirits, the afterlife and mediumship? So uh, let's see if anybody has anything on the chat. Give people a few minutes to uh, type it out. Need some filler discussion in the Double meantime. Ones. From Sue, she thinks that humans open up more easily without daylight distractions. That's true as well, the idea that your senses heighten if one is dim, so perhaps because your eyes aren't functioning at 100% because it's dark, your ears and sense of how you know if you're being surrounded by something as stronger I think that's yeah, the quiet was very good for concentration really to try to it was very quiet yes 
Except for some crazy teenagers. Yeah, there's, one, there's always crazy teenagers. Yeah, no matter where you are. <laughs> <laughs> it was both in Scotland and Wales we had crazy teenagers. <laughs> From Alice. No questions, just wanted to say I love your channel. Thank you, Alice. Uh, Paranormal Now, just wanted to say thank you for meeting with us last week. It was amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Paranormal Now. <laughs> <laughs> we hope you've enjoyed our little discussion on this <laughs> live stream. We've got... Let's go. A couple of questions here. Was the graveyard overwhelming? Yes. Well, the graveyard well, itself. No. Like, it was more a, the stuff that happened in the graveyard. It was a nice graveyard, but it wasn't. It was what happened in there, like I said. <laughs> Why do you think some spirits stay where they are? I think for the recently deceased, familial ties are really important. They want to be close to their loved ones, to offer them support, to check in on what they're doing. For places where traumatic things happened, Perhaps they feel a connection to that place. I don't know how much um, I believe that, sp that there are more spirits in a graveyard just because somebody's buried there. I don't know. Mm. We're emotional creatures, creatures of meaning. And I, yeah. I think just staying where you're buried, if it doesn't necessarily have an emotional connection, doesn't well, entirely make sense to me. You would think they'd be more in their homes. Exactly. Or even their pubs or whatever. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Denise, and thank you, Linda. Got lots of uh, lovely comments. Vicky, love your channel. From Sue again, you guys rock. Thank you. It really, really does. T I know that I, whenever we do update videos, I always say things like, it means so much to us, and it warms our hearts, and it, it can sound a bit repetitive, but we really do mean it. Words just sound enough. Like I know. Words are always lacking. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just incredible support we get. Okay well, then. Well, should we wrap it up then? Yeah, I think that's that's the end of it, really. So thank yeah. you to everyone for tuning in. If you've missed the start of it and you've only just joined us, in a few hours it will be um, uploading onto the channel so you can watch it, the live, not live, to catch up on bits that you missed. Um, but other than that, keep an eye out for our next video. Check out our merchandise if you haven't already. We'll be back next Friday, hopefully usual time. And we hope to have more updates in the future on this documentary. So until next time, remember, the more you know, the more there is to fear. Goodbye. <laughs>